It was on the 15th of September of the year 1066 that Tunka Menon came into power within the country of Ghana. This is the start of my Let's Play, this is Pew Pew Choo Choo, and you are watching Crusader Kings 2, Sword of Islam. One of the major features is that obviously you can you can play as the Muslim leaders of the world, of the world in the medieval era. So uh, I figured I might as well choose somebody exotic um, over here on the African desert coast place. And uh, I figured Ghana might have been a good choice. It's fairly safe because of the two passages that lead to it. Oddly, oddly enough, you can't actually sail to it. There's no real province here that you can hop off of. So we have relative safety, uh, but it might make our advances up into the north a little harder. And uh, I really don't know if I should just kind of assume that everybody knows how to play this game by now, and that's kind of why you're watching or uh, to kind of explain everything as I go along, but I think I'll just kind of explain things as I go along. So at the moment I chose the ambition to get married, which will give us a little bit of piety, I believe. And uh, how you can tell is through these uh, info boxes here, and you can see that on success it will gain 10 piety. So this is a really easy ambition. All I had to do is really just choose a person, and I'm just kind of picking somebody who uh, fulfills the gaps inside my stats. So. Right now you can see that we have a low state diplomacy and I'm going to choose a wife that uh, gives me a large buff to it. So this one has a diplomacy a skill of 10 which will help me out uh, quite a bit and uh, kind of just supplements all the skills that I am lacking in by a little bit. And because uh, we are there, we are her master, that way we can just kind of, we don't really need approval for that. And because uh, we are a polygamist, we can actually have more than one wives. So right now we're sending out a proposal to her master, which uh, is our vessel, so he will probably not refuse. And uh, we can have a maximum of three, so we should probably just max that out like that. Uh, moving on, let's take a look at our country of Ghana. We have quite a few very profitable provinces due to uh, our location uh, in comparison to the lands to the north. And uh, we are part of the Dijur Kingdom of Mali, which uh, is my ultimate goal to form, which involves the conquest of the neighboring uh, northern counties as well as the Duchy of Songhai. And that is our immediate goal. So let's uh, let's get started on assigning our ministers different jobs and our chancellor here. They, notice how they all have uh, numerical stats. The higher they these are, the better they are. So uh, we have a fairly well-rounded team here. Our chancellor, uh, we could send him to fabricate claims, which I think I will actually. I'll send him to improve diplomatic relations with uh, one of my. Vessels. I'll send our marshal to actually suppress revolts uh, right here inside Gurma, and I'll show you guys why that I'm uh, doing that right now. I'll send my steward to go and research economic tech, and I'll send my spy master off to the Holy Land so that he can kind of siphon technology off for us. Technology doesn't really spread that fast, and if it spreads, it spreads to the nearby provinces. That being said, with our location, we need to rely on a good spy master who can siphon off technology for us. Our uh, religious minister has a very important task inside our country, and that is uh, getting rid of the pagans pro that are uh, prominent, prominent eh, inside the central and uh, south corner of our country because we are of uh, Muslim religion it makes uh, them infidels which increases the chance of revolts such as uh, this man right here the chief of Gurma is a pagan and uh, that being said he has a high chance of revolt that's why I sent my marshal there to suppress him and uh, eventually I want to imprison him and preferably uh, execute him so now that we've uh, fulfilled our ambition of having a wife. Let's switch that to a different one, to having a daughter, which uh, gives us pretty much the same gain ten piety. And it looks like uh, it looks like that person has thrown his uh, arms in open revolt. So I'll get my marshal to actually train troops in a different province now, and 
it looks like we need to go and teach Grimm a lesson. So right now I can raise troops from my domain or from my vessels. If I uh, raise troops from my uh, vassals, I do not have to pay maintenance for the troops. However, it will upset them. So that being said, I want to raise my personal troops and I just want them to form inside this province. So let's, uh, let's just get these troops to form up and start invading the country. Nope. There is no man better at increasing the troops' opinion of me able to teach me to become a more pious Muslim than I am something. We can either gain church opinion from this event or gain monthly piety. And I believe monthly piety is better because as a Islamic leader, uh, piety is very important. Looks like a king has uh, wanted us to marry off one of our courtiers, which uh, is what I will do. Ooh, at age 17, one of our vassals died and has uh, left us with his land holdings, which I will give to my son. So I will give my son the county of Mali and Bambuk. Looks like we've won that battle here, and you can kind of just uh, watch some movies and like play with some stickmen to just kind of emulate the battles because they are actually not shown, they're just kind of fought like that. So now that we've uh, defeated his army, we are now sieging the province of Girma, and you can see that uh, the little castle thing right here uh, has a little health meter, and as that goes down to zero, that means that we've captured the province. So. Uh, as that happens, we gain uh, certain notifications about the siege, and right now a failed sally by the defender, which means that we take a few losses and they take a few losses, and this will just go back and forth until uh, one of us wins. I'm probably just going to skip most of those events, because in, in all honesty, they don't affect the siege that much. They're just kind of there for flavor. Ah, perfect. More and more uh, people are converting to our faith. This is good. This is good. One of our wives, uh, because we can have multiple wives, uh, generally the first wife, the one uh, pictured here is the one that uh, does the most, is the most prominent, and generally uh, her sons are going to become, were, uh, they're going to inherit our position as a lord or king later on. Uh, that being said, it's a highly prized role. And I'm just gonna say no because I chose somebody with good stat bonuses and I do not want that. So uh, I have enacted peace, I've ordered them to surrender and now we have uh, imprisoned this man right here, this pagan who dared to hold a uh, rebellion against us and we can revoke his title. So let's, let's do that, we're gonna revoke his title and reclaim his land and just keep him like that. So at the moment we do not need our uh, military to be active, so I think I'll just uh, deactivate that, which is perfect. And speed up time by a little bit, actually. Our spy master is idle. He needs to be off in Jerusalem doing things over there. I like to keep him here simply because this is a fairly teched out province and there's always a battle here so then I can kind of watch what's uh, the development in the Middle East and with the Crusades and all that. So going back to the formation of uh, the Kingdom of Mali, we require all the land here to uh, actually form the title and claim it. And um, this title is actually divided up into little provinces where lords, uh, and one of them uh, is Mali, and you can see this one's Ghana, and this is uh, Timbuktu, and this one's Songhai. If uh, if my son was 
in charge of uh, these two provinces, he will become another lord like me, and uh, that would split our country into two, actually, which I do not want. So uh, there's that aspect of the game in which uh, you kind of had to keep everybody in control. I, I can give him the rest of the terrain here, no problem, but that's going to split my country into two if he does not submit to my rule, which I do not want. Well, right now let's deal with the domestic side of things. Uh, we can change the laws in the country, and unlike uh, Christian kingdoms, we can kind of impose these at will, as long as we have the piety to uh, do it. So right now we have 80 piety, 83 piety, and we gain 1.7 monthly, which is alright. And I'm just going to confirm large feudal tax, which will kind of siphon a bit of money off of him to me. And this is another one of those random events that uh, pops up. So a book without title was pushed into my hands by a hooded man clad in midnight blue. Something said but it was lost in translation. The book is still there and we have the option of uh, gaining 20 piety or uh, gaining the illumination trait. I'm just going to go with Hey Wait because it gains more piety straight off the bat, which uh, we will need uh, shortly afterwards in declaring war. So it looks like uh, now there's a resolution of this event. Some events are chained out like this, so there's uh, multiple pathways you can follow. And it looks like uh, we gain the trait scholar from it, which is perfect. Let's go onwards to victory. A prisoner is asking for better commendations. Well, he can rot. Actually, this is a great time to uh, commence one of these decisions that we can make, and one of them, one of the ones that are unique to Muslim leaders, is to uh, go on pilgrimage. And uh, what this will do is that there is a chance of death. However, the the earlier you do this, the better it is, and I, I think I'll just show you guys why. So right now I'm going to start that and immediately I gain a piety bonus. And uh, we can take another person with us, and it looks like we don't really have the option to refuse. So uh, let's do that, which will give them a little bit of piety as well. So right now onwards, which will give us the trait on, on Hajai, or however you pronounce that. And uh, what this will do is actually it'll leave the country to be run by one of our uh, lower counselors or vessels. And it looks like our spy master is in charge of our country, so he'll be running the place um, as we are off on vacation, pretty much. So as we are going on our pilgrimage, we want to suddenly just go back and torture our prisoners, which I will say obviously don't go, which gives us a little bit of piety, which is great. One of my servants has noticed that a hated rival is camping not far from us. I know that it is against the teachings of the Prophet to attack someone on Hajai, but if this is a golden opportunity, so we can kind of attack them, or we can befriend them, or we can just ignore them, and I'm going to go with befriend them. Ooh, so we actually lose a little bit of prestige, but it's alright. Ah, uh, this event I absolutely love. So there's an old man, and um, he, we, we can offer him some food, and he'll tell us a story. And we, it costs one gold, right? But uh, you can see that this gives us uh, one steadwardship, which is just absolutely amazing, because you can't really gain stats any other way uh, really easily like that. So we finally arrived there, we gained some money, and get some relationship bonus. Now I'm not really sure uh, what the what like uh, these events re relate to in real life. I'm not all that much of a religious person myself. But um, we have two options here. We can shout at every circuit inside the ceremony, where we can only shout the first three times. And we have the option of gaining the trait uh, proud. Or we can gain the trait humble, which gives us piety. And uh, I want that piety really badly, so let's go with that. And I'm not really sure what this one is, but we gain some piety from it. Perfect. A group of bandits have forced our party to make a stand, so uh, we have a slight chance of being wounded. However, I do not want to get the, the cowardly trait, so I will fight them. 
it's only a 10% chance, so uh, looks like it worked out. We didn't die and we have, uh, came back to our country. And now we are back to Roland. Uh, when, when we were away, it looks like uh, our monthly decadence has dropped. And uh, right now, I don't want to get into the finer aspects of that at this moment. However, it looks like we accumulated quite a lot of prestige and piety as well as a bit of gold. Gold prestige and piety can be used to pretty much they're they're just in they're just different types of currencies really. Uh, piety and prestige do affect uh, people's opinions of you. However, uh, their primary function is well, primary function for piety as uh, Muslim leaders is in the form of a separate currency, whereas prestige is just kind of there for show. It increases our relationship with uh, with people. So as you can see here, uh, the Lord of Songhai. Is, uh, has a plus one from our prestige value of a hundred or so. However, he uh, he values our piety more and gives us a plus five. We're both diligent, so plus ten to that. And we uh, well, I have gone on a pilgrimage, so that gives me a plus ten. However, I am actually going to declare war on him. And as a Muslim leader, I can actually declare war and conquer single border counties for pretty much no like real religion um or sorry no real re eh can't talk today reason so we lose 50 piety but uh we can pretty much just nab a province from him and i want to do that real fast so i want to level all of my troops and assemble him assemble them somewhere in the back and i also want a separate army so i'm going to levy up uh troops from the far provinces, from my vessels, the Siles, however you pronounce it, and just kind of form them up here. Now, uh, the longer that we keep these troops from our uh, our vessels present, the the longer we get a negative uh, opinion bonus from doing so. But uh, the good thing about this is that we, we can levy up so much more troops and we can just kind of conquer places so much faster. And I think it's a very good trade-off. So now that we have conquered that once again, uh, we need to siege the country. So I need to form two different armies. Send one up, send one down. That will ensure us a good way to siege and now begins the, the sitting war where we sit outside of castles and play poker and other games while this, they starve inside and occasionally get raided by bandits. Perfect, so more, more children. That's always good. Siege victory. Once again, I'm just going to skip all of those siege events because all they really are is that uh, we take losses because of the enemy trying to do stuff. Like in reality, these really don't matter, it's just simply the two different uh, sides take losses and they're not like very major losses too. Uh oh, somebody died. Who died? Who died? Who died? Our son has actually died. Uh, we do not know the cause of it, but I suspect that uh, it was either because he was on war or assassins got him. So now we are a little over over the limit by one. So I need to grant some landed titles to uh, this man right here, and I'll grant him the county of Bamboo. Perfect. We can gain a little bit more land and this splits the country of Sungai into two provinces up here and down here which limits their effectiveness in future wars and gives us another province. I'm gonna give our successor another landed title, same as before, just to kinda keep ourselves under the cap and keep most of the power uh, within ourselves. And I think I'll actually end the part um, here. I'd like to uh, just, you know, end it off with 
like a video and subscribe, and uh, if you have any questions or would like to see something happen, please post them in the comments, and I bid you goodbye.